Howdy there, I'm Folks, text of the Black Pants Legion. Um, I'm here playing Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, and um, I got some British people here to help me design the Royal Navy. Um, so I've got Phil the Tinder from Bristol. Say hi, Phil. Hello. I've got Chippy from uh, Barnsley, home of pies. Say hi, Chippy. Hey, yo. And I've got CJ from Wales. Say hi, CJ. Hello, CJ. Thank you. So uh, you all have various backgrounds and experience. Um, let's go with the last year of Queen Victoria's reign, uh, 1900 and one. Oh, and Trugath has joined us. Excellent. Uh, Trugath, who is also Scottish. So we have the United Kingdom represented for, for designing this Royal Navy. I would just need Northern Ireland. Well, we don't have anybody who's applied from there yet. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, so say hi, Trugath. Hello. All right. So here's the thing is we're doing the last year of, okay, who we have a beef with? Is this going to be a dust up against France? I mean, we need to, we need to come up oh, with, uh, France is the, is the classic opponent. I always got to keep them in check. Oh, <laughs> Russian is all, Russia is always fun. We had a good big, a big long face off with them with, with, uh, under Queen Vic, didn't we? The, um, and, and before that, uh, the great game wasn't it against, against yeah, Russia? Yeah, it was against, yes, in Afghanistan and many other places. That's true. So Russia or France, England, I'll let you guys vote. France. Uh, uh, England, France. All right. And uh, fine. All right. So France. France. Um, let's do two battleships versus each other. Let's do a channel fleet scuffle. And we just got to design a ship. So, um... Okay, this is where we get a start. Uh, what should the class name be, gentlemen? Um, is there a pre-select, uh, pre-generated list, or no? I mean, you can. It just says it's Jupiter class because oh. you know, there was a thing around that point in time to have ship classes after Greek gods. So you had the Jupiter class, you know, Orion. There was the uh, majestic class. Uh, all of these things, but. I'm saying this this is your chance to be the Lord of the Admiralty, uh, Sir Joseph Porter, as it were. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to say, uh, let's name it after the, uh, one of the most boring towns in the UK, but that is actually Hull. Hull? Hull. What's wrong with Hull? Hull. I was right with Hull. Okay, yeah. so Hull it is. So you're just going to name it after an unpleasant... <laughs> so what it, give me a rundown because I don't know your place that well I I think that it's pretty much the Shire that's all I know and I'm I'm just I'm just trying to figure out uh what's the deal like why do you guys not like hull oh do you guys want this in inches or millimeters I'm sorry oh inches obviously inches of course <laughs> this is imperial You're in our town now boy all right uh let's <laughs> that's the problem is uh, I know guns and inches, and I know guns and inches in caliber, and I know some pistols and inches or in and millimeters. But for like big <clears throat> artillery, all I know is inches and caliber, and then all this millimeter shit's blowing me. But I I do know armor and millimeters, so it's it's absolutely bonkers that I have to ah I hate it. So um yes, how many inches of gun do we want, gentlemen? What was the, what was the restrictions at the time? I forget. About thirteen inch. I mean, you won't see much bigger than that. And like thirteen and a half and fourteen inch guns are even very, very common uh, up past, uh, at least briefly past Jutland. So, you know, this is this is if we did a thirteen inch gun, we'd be ahead of our time by a bit. Mm. Well, um, would it be fair to say that uh, you don't really need more than nine inches? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that I mean, all right. Do we want to go with bigger, fewer guns, or many smaller guns? What is? Are we going to HMS victory? This is what I'm asking. I think you need a wall of smoke. A wall yeah. of smoke. One of them needs to be a wall of smoke. Okay, I we like can, lots of guns. Lots of guns. All right, so many, many small guns. You got it. We oh, are that's a lot of culture. Well, <laughs> that's a lot of culture. Ugh. Yeah. Fucking true guff is a man of culture. Lots of guns. Well, wow. yeah. So, okay, we've got... Go ahead. 
I was just going to say, I'm more thinking along the lines of they're probably not a very good shot, so... So you're giving them more chances. You're trying to be more... Yeah, yeah all right. You're, you're trying to be like, all right, lads, we know you have no education, uh, and you are essentially members of the scum class. Can you please... Yeah, so I went with a bunch of these uh, two-inch guns, uh, like quick-firing two-inch guns, uh, the anti-torpedo guns of their day, or anti-balloon guns, if you will. Do we want torpedo tubes, gentlemen? Uh, if we can spare the weight. They're only 26 tons a, a pop. They're not that bad. Um, so we've got... Okay, you want smoke. I can make that happen. Um yes, please. Uh, <laughs> Every, what is with you guys in like industrial apocalypses? Because <laughs> like you you think the rest of the world is is got bad pollution or whatever, but then you look back at like the big stink and all the stuff that happened in the Victorian era, where you're like they call London Coketon because of all the coal coking smoke. I mean, you're like, oh yeah, it's just a little drab. <laughs> if you make any part of the country like London, it's eventually going to fall to pieces. That's fair. I mean, one is also, I, I have to ask you guys some questions uh, as I go through and make the ship just as tough as can be. And I'm not switching. You know what? England has a lot of coal. What if we say we never switch from coal? Oh. Let's just stay. Okay, so... Oh, yeah. shit. So, yeah. so we went, we stuck with coal, but can we like have turbines? <laughs> oh, well, in 1901, no. Uh, but we can get multiple expansion steam engines. Uh, turbines aren't really a thing in capital ships until HMS Dreadnought. However, if you're looking for ship that predates that, that would be the Turbinia, uh, was one of the first hull yeah. applications. Uh, ooh, ooh, stereoscopic rangefinders. Nice. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to move up to, uh, ballastite instead of brown powder. So, ooh. Oh, no. Yeah, because Tur Turbina wasn't uh, 1894 or something, so... That yeah. was very recent in when this was... Well, you have, off, you have to understand how crazy it is, how forward-thinking the Admiralty was in building the Dreadnought, because to take something that was like a prototype uh, just 10 years beforehand and then apply that to capital ship construction is insane. That is that is like insane levels of engineering. Also, uh, we could use picric acid if you want. Um, this shit's horrifying. I mean, it's horrifying. However, it, yeah, yeah if, if we use pancreatic acid and they penetrate, the ship disappears. <laughs> so, however, if so it, it hits their ship, big fire. The problem is pancreatic acid is very contact sensitive in this mixing. So is it a lot of the shells will just hit and burst rather than penetrate uh, that use pancreatic acid and derivatives. So it's it's one of those I issues where, well, you know what? We're actually using smaller cal caliber guns, so we want to burn them down anyways, right? Yeah. It's that or gun cotton. <laughs> oh. I mean, nothing <laughs> like... So, well, gun <laughs> cotton is is like nitrated. I almost said the formulation. Uh, it's, it's, it's nitrated cotton fiber, and uh, it's really energetic. <laughs> It's very energetic. So, um, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, our choices at this point are black powder, which is Jesus Christ, why? And then uh, <laughs> gun cotton, which is excitable, or picric acid, which is like contact excite. You know what? Let's just burn people. Uh, yeah, let's just do some zone crazing. Yeah, I think, well, I think that sounds very British to just roll it and be like, I say, it appears you must die, and then just let them have it. Uh, let's say regular regular crews um and i'm gonna see if i can't get it to 21 knots because 21 knots in this time frame is is like light speed okay we need uh, more armor 10 inches boys that's what the ladies like what yeah what monster have you got what are you talking about uh, uh queen and country queen and country with my 10 inch -er. All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to drive into the French Channel fleet. Uh, oh my! Look, he has more smokestacks than me. This is not acceptable. This is bullshit. Yeah, ours are, ours are, yeah, ours are more girthy though. So yeah. well, yeah. yeah, that's what ladies like. They like girthier smokestacks, not multiple smokes. Like, oh, man. they like throughput. 
<laughs> it's it's kind of funny because it's gone beyond even any sort of reasonable innuendo, and now it's become this like engine draft argument. <laughs> <laughs> Good God, look at that bastard. What a chode of a worship. That smoke, man. Yeah. Let's have girth, don't he? Well, what bothers me is, like, look at the guy in this tower back here. Like, he's just... <laughs> it's like, what do you no, see? <laughs> Nothing! It'll be that. It'll be that having a fucking cigarette and all. Jenkins, what do you see? <laughs> you <Yeah. walk> off. <laughs> guy lowers a bucket with a note in it because he can't yell. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like to be stuck up there for eight hours on the, on watch. Okay, it heals pretty bad on turning. Um, that was common of ships of this era. So I'm going to speed up till we make contact, and then I want to watch this picric acid start detonating. So we get the hull and the ensign. Um, we are charging in at 17 knots, uh, which seems to be formation key. Oh, contact made. All right, contact made, two enemy contacts. Looks like we are at 9.5 clicks. Uh, I'm switching batteries over to HE. We're running up the batteries and coming to battle speed, making battle speed 15 knots. Gonna give the gunners the best shot. Let's try to identify what... Looks like they... What? What is this? I... Uh... I... I mean... It's got one big stack and then like a slightly smaller one and then what is this? One appears not to be in use as well. I don't know if that's Is that like a reserve stack? Is that like the turbo? Do they have to like open a giant wastegate with valves? They're like <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, it's like, maybe it's like the Titanic and one of them is just, you know, fake. Oh, I get it. Like Cosmetic stacks. Or even even better, um, they charged a uh, like oh my god. Okay, they charged the government for like four stacks and two work. They're like, oh yeah, we gotta replumb all that engine ducting, and they're like, oh yes, of course. Actually, the French they'd be like, this seems normal. I don't know. Uh, so far, it's it's an artillery duel. We've not taken any hits. Uh, the crew cannot decide. Ah, the crew have just decided it is in fact a warship that is shooting at them. So, <laughs> <laughs> some guy up in the crow's nest, sir, I believe it's the enemy, <laughs> based on the four or five minutes of bracketing fire. Uh, oh, sir, I don't think it's one of ours this time. <laughs> I say this isn't an exercise at all, Clarence. <laughs> Definitely an enemy warship. Uh um, so looks like we've got the ranging. I'm seeing the guns starting to feed in real nice. So here we go. It's it's rolling in. Rounds going each way. Oh 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 damn. Alright, they're they're getting there. They're getting there. All we have to do is connect with one of these. Ah uh, yeah. Alright. So he we yeah we're trying to identify it but we have no idea his rate of fire seems a little slower than mine i think he's actually slowing down i think the smoke is going a little bit more up uh i think he's slowing down to take a better advantageous firing position uh not that it seems to be doing anything to these smonk stacks crawling over the horizon uh all right let's let's turn hard Let's turn hard in there. Get in there. There we go. There we go. Warship. All right, we got the hull. We're just going to turn in. We're going to cross that T. Ooh, that was very oh. close. They, they're getting better. We're we're trying to uh, win this little gunnery duel here and do a little bit of math. I mean, I keep Just seeing our shells. Smoke. Yeah, they're like, oh, these smoke clouds seem to be firing a lot at each other. Uh, we're gonna turn in and let the bow armor kind of deflect, uh, and and see what I can get on deflection because I up armored the shit out of this thing. So if I can close in and use the hull, I'll be down on guns, but he can't do anywhere near as much damage. We're getting close. 
And you might you've got a bad torpedo launcher as well. So I do, but these are very bad torpedoes. These are like really bad torpedoes. So we're we're gonna see what we can get. But we're they're trying very hard to identify Okay, is it a battleship? They're not certain. They think it's about the size of us. So they're like, is is it a battleship? Maybe. Oh, ah, shit. Come on, guys. Give me some of that beautiful, beautiful picric acid action. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Mmm. Just short. That must be so infuriating. It's like bowling, really. I mean, could you imagine looking through a gunner's telescope and watching the wake as a shell cut through the air and being like, no more whammies, no more whammies, no more whammies, as you watch it just go through. Oh, that'd be fucking awesome. Oh, that's good. I'll take him best. Uh, they're, they're getting close. Cutting range is, is helping us get in there. So far, nobody has landed a shot on anything. Watch me get citadeled and just explode. All of them hit, uh... Yeah, nothing... All right, so Several of the captains having tea on the uh, bridge. Probably. I mean, you have to think at the Battle of Tsushima, the battle fleets are engaging at like four to six thousand meters, like battleships. <laughs> so that's uh, crazy. There's enough time for a kettle to boil. All right, what kind of tea would you want as a captain of a British ship? Need I say, builders, definitely builders' tea. Builders the, the, tea. The brand has to be Yorkshire. Yorkshire. All right. Yorkshire tea. I don't know. I the water. Is my always answer. You are. It depends on what, True Gath? The water. Oh. Well, if that... you're in Scotland, you need a soft water tea. If you're in Yorkshire, you need Yorkshire tea because it's the only thing that can cut through their water. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right, we've made positive identification. Uh, this is the her heroin, heroin, heroine, heroine, heroin, heroin high ship. We. Oh, yeah. That uh, is an uh, odd mix of calibers. Yeah. Uh, so, and then the Charles Martel. Uh, look, all you'd have to do, really, in all honesty, is look at the tricolor. It's French. Go get the book that has all of their battleships and count the funnels and go from there. Like, it's very basic stuff. And you're like, okay, did they change the shape of the hull? But yeah, they've got 9-inch guns, 7-inch guns. That's what all those casemates are, so that's actually really dangerous. That last salvo was incredibly close. Indeed. 5-inch guns, 4-inch guns, 2-inch guns, and 2-inch guns. That's weird. Also, unfortunately, using the same... Uh explosive as us as well well this is going to get really exciting then oh come on come on dick eyes come on out all the two inch guns now all right yeah now now it's going to get exciting because this oh. is oh we took a hit one of our funnels is down ah oh god it's on the second ship he no it's on the first ship i may fall out of formation shit all right i may be down on speed Thank God I have two funnels. Thank God I planned before. All right, here's what we're going to do. Oh, you go for two. I'm going to turn for present and raking fire, gentlemen. Oh, that looks like a good hit. Yeah. Uh, nil and nil. Oh. It's it's either bouncing or failing to detonate. When I present, though, uh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Heart over, boys. <laughs> Uh, yes. Just let the ensign fly, lads. Turn the other cheek. Oh, yeah. Now I should let the secondaries get in on this. The many, many secondaries. The, the tiny things that look like BBs flying out. Ah, yes. Air soft navy. <laughs> ah, yes. Ships of the line and what? I say... Oh, God. There. All right, so we've got a fire on the mid-deck, it looks like. So far, I can't seem to hit this asshole. Uh, trying to get them to concentrate fire. I want these guys... I want all my secondaries just flailing. 
I want the torpedo launchers to fire as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, actually, let's just be aggressive as shit. We're belligerent, right? That's what we're supposed to be. The Royal Navy is not supposed to be tame. I mean, it's it's one of those things of... This is the savior of the nation, but also, uh, if, if you have fucked around, you're about to find out. Or it was at one point. What do you guys have left? Like, you, you have, like, a carrier or two and a few subs? And, I think like, we still have the Ark Royal. Uh, is it still uh, in service? We've got, a f we've got the carrier, we've got some frigates, we have... We sold off some royal fleet Ooh. of stuff. I think a tanker got set up, sold recently as well. Oh my god, look. I, I hit his bridge, which is now on fire. Nice. Yes. Those lads get an extra... Oh, hey, here's a good question. If if you were the captain, or if you were the uh, first lord of the admiralty, which historically has had both very highly competent people in it and very not highly competent people in it, uh, so, sometimes political and sometimes incredibly powerful and strategic minded folks. Um, what would you say, what would you say is, um, your first choice of naval tradition reinstitution in the Royal Navy? What would you bring back from ages of yore if you were the first Lord of the Admiralty? I would actually bring back something that was disposed of somewhat recently, at least in the length of the Navy, which was uh, a sporting event where they would run a cannon uh, from one end of a field to another, moving it over obstacles, and it was and different parts of the Navy, like the fleet air arm the, uh, and other, uh, other branches would all come of the Royal Navy would come together and, and into teams, and they would do this very uh, physically uh, demanding exercise and the idea is you get to the cannon to the other side of the field you fire three rounds and then you move the cannon back and you, you've got to break the cannon down oh that's uh, nuts and, that's no yeah, that's, I, that's that's really that's really smart as like a tag team thing like you you have to like figure out who to carry it how to break it down how to move it how to reassemble it like oh that's kind of neat i choose cj as my it. partner <laughs> i've watched that in person uh, i was at a um training regiment when it was going on it was very very cool to watch. Yes, I believe it dates from the um, Crimean. Well, conflict. still, that's I, that's like a cool tradition. I mean, it's yeah. oh man, we are beaten. I mean, hey, we may not be able to penetrate this bitch, but we can roast a sausage. Look at that! <laughs> nice, fucking full English onto the fucking ocean. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the uh, his uh, master builders chart right here, and it's just burning. Like the whole thing is just cooking. My God, it seems it smash that uh, that little test CJ with a cannon. Use your brains and just use my brawn, man. We'll get it's, it done. So what you're we'll saying win. is, uh, it's it, it would be like Master Blaster. Like you've got you've got like Shippy and CJ working together, and it's like who controls T Town? Yeah, CJ's just pointing and telling me what to do because I have no idea how to fucking work a cannon. <laughs> Just do the British officer thing, like adjust the brim of your hat and be like, all right, lads, I'm very disappointed in you. And then you leave, and then the color sergeant comes out and screams everything. <laughs> like, the officer can't yell. That's improper. He just has to express disappointment and then let the NCOs handle it. Oh, that's that's actually not quite true. They can yell, just not directly in front of oh, uh, the I'm, men. I'm sorry, not so, directly in front of the men, yes. No. So what they can do, and this is the, the biggest the, the, the best instance, is they can go off to like a little side room with a window open and then yell at the sergeant. Or Oh, so everyone can hear. Got it. <laughs> Everybody can hear. Okay, so this, then, I'm, I'm, hold on, this guy is on fire stem to stern, and I'm about to hit him with a torpedo. This is this is so good. You guys have a great navy idea. This is Royal Navy tradition, guys. You're making your forefathers very happy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no. Oh, and not the engine right out. Very nice. Good God. Like, look at the look at the upper right. Everything is aflame. Except for what's <sighs> full of water. There's like four compartments. No, five, six compartments that don't have fire in them. 
So I've uh, I checked up what what it was called. It's it's known as the gun race, and you have to transport a twelve pounder field gun and limber over obstacles, fire three rounds, and then move it back over the obstacles. That's see, okay. Have you seen the Russian tank Olympics where everyone has the same T seventy two or whatever? Yes. And and so here's my idea, like. I, I like some of the lessons that Battletech can teach us, which is like if you, you can put everything else aside, if you just agree to fight it out in a very controlled way. That sounds insane, but I like it. I know it's not possible, but I think it's funny. So what if we did this as a way of settling wars where like we had a military Olympics and you had all these courses. And so every military would just have to be really, really, really good. And then you solve territorial disputes through essentially these really high-end competitions. I think that'd be kind of funny. I know it'd be I terrible. What competition, what competition would you choose? Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, I if, if we had to have competitions for, like, fighting a war... <laughs> it, it, Robot chucks. Yeah, robot jacks. That's what I. That's what I want to see. Uh, but no, I think it'd be crazy to see like one of the artillery competitions is like who can land the shell closest to the mark, at like twenty miles. Like who can get like first? A really complex like, game of balls. Yeah, just like a very complex game of round on target, and and it's just see who can do it fastest, quickest, most accurate. Um, or who has the stealthiest airplane? Like, set up a crazy, crazy st- uh, stealth detection rig and radar, and then just see who's got the craziest stealth airplane. Uh, though North Korea would probably just be like, yeah, you want to see it again? And we're like, you guys aren't even in this competition. They're like, oh, no, it's that stealthy. It's been here the whole time. And you're like, come on, North Korea. Come on. You want to see me run to that mountain? You want to see me do it again? Yeah, exactly. It's just like, c- come on. <laughs> like, the way I explain nuclear weapons and nations, wow, he's sinking. Holy shit. We just, so far our ships are indestructible and their ships just burn. This is amazing. It's like Yorkshire tea, man. French fries. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to slow down so we can just take more time shooting. Um, but I don't know. I, I, if, if we're talking about Royal Navy traditions that I'd bring back, I, when did you guys get rid of rum? Like, I think that that would probably, cause I know you guys in the British forces can drink. Uh, it depends on the regiment. One regiment, at least as far as I'm aware, still has the rum ration, which is the Gurkhas. Well, yeah, but the Gurkhas yeah. do what they want. That's in, the, that's in the army. I don't know about other regiments, and I'm not sure about the navy. Well, I had a beer ration ten years ago, and that was all right. We, we didn't call it rum. You're only allowed beer. So... What kind of uh, what kind of beer would the British Army get? Honestly, uh, I think most of the people I knew drank Carling. All right, <laughs> just so. a, a, a lager. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> How many Americans did you have come over to your base wanting that beer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to bet all of them. Uh, they weren't allowed to drink at lunchtime. Well, of course, at lunch, you're like, oh, you're like, oh this water is savage. <laughs> uh, Wait, so we're all fucking drinking, and the Americans just sat there with the, oh, at least I got my Coca-Cola. Ah, <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> wow. Well, at least our rifles work. <laughs> Zing. Ouch. Look, you, we put tea in what was then your harbor. You put oil in ours. It's technically our ball now, right? Speaking of that tea, you can actually get a blend from the East India Company. It's still, at least in the company, is still around. You can buy tea off them that's of a blend that is uh, about the same as what you threw into the harbor. So you can buy that if you wish. Oh, uh, link me. And, I'm, and I'm no, not, no, I'm interested it, because I, I actually rediscovered that some of these artisanal tea blends of long ago are being kind of remade. And it's really exciting because a lot of people go, I don't like tea because they've had really bland Lipton's or whatever. And then they go discover these actual old school tea blends that like made empires the fucking dutch east indies or voc uh company and you find that 
these T-Blends are starting to come back into production after being kind of limited run for a very long y- years. And you're like, holy crap, like this is the T to built in empire. It's great. So yeah, link me. I think that shit's cool. Absolutely. I'm going to send you that and a little example of the gun race. Oh yeah, please. That's, that shit's fascinating. Uh, the gun race. What is the name of it? So people can Google it. Cause they're going to ask, they're going to be like, what's the name of the gun race? Uh, I will get you the name just now. I, I believe Royal their Navy ships suck. Royal Navy Field Gun Competition. Royal Navy Field Gun Competition. Yes, that's his technical name. Although people just call it the gun race. The gun... Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, even, even that Tank Olympics. I would call it the Tank Olympics. Like the Olympics, but with tanks. Or I guess it's more a biathlon, huh? See, I I think we should have a tank competition where every nation in the world just, like, brings the best tanks and the tank crew they have. And then you have, like, all the tank stuff, but it's it's reenacting shit from movies. Like, you have to do the tank chase from GoldenEye. And you just choose, yes, you, and, and you just choose to host it in a city that needs urban renewal, anyways. Like, hey, th- no one's living here. These we need to bulldoze these houses, so you get to like smash through them all with tanks, and then use the money raised for that to rebuild that, build fucking gardens or housing or whatever. Like, win win. Everyone gets to see a cool tank race. People get houses or gardens or whatever, and uh, job program infrastructure, and uh, we we also get to see tanks destroy stuff. I mean, that's. That's really great. I as an American love this idea. Also, uh, I our ships. I mean, we went into this battle and we lost like sixty guys across two ships, and we are annihilating their navy. This is horrific. Is it just the sheer uh, d- deficit uh, difference in guns? No, it's it's not weight of fire in this case because the guns are not that accurate. Um, because you're looking at at engagement range like two to three percent hits at best in this era. What it actually is is having enough tonnage left over from choosing lots of small batteries to up armor the shit out of it because shells of this period have a hard problem shattering or they tend to shatter on armor. So at best, they're not getting full penetration of shot, even at point blank range. The shells are just exploding. See? Ricochets. So it's uh, even at point blank range, the main battery is useless. So we built ironclads and they built timber clads. And we just drove up to them and beat the shit out of them. So we're, we're, we're just uh, doing a drive by Molotov, basically. We're basically doing what the Russians did in the Crimean War to start the fucking thing. Um, it, this is this is really brutal, but it's it's using a little bit of engineering know how that there is a limitation to these shells ability to penetrate armor, given the uh, volatile nature, nature of the filler. And so, yeah, he's done. Um, that's a bad hit. Uh, that's his back broken. There's no way he's coming back from that. Cause if the front goes down fast enough, it'll just bend it. So yeah, way to water. He's going down. Uh, his deck is a wash and what isn't a wash is burning. Like this is horrific. Like a third of his crew died in that explosion. My God. I mean, we're having some problem with lighter battery actually able to penetrate, but oh no, he just exploded. Cool. Yeah, yeah, there he goes. Royal Navy untouched, gentlemen. Good job. Uh, I have, I have checked for you. Uh, the East India Company does still sell it. Uh, it is called the Boston Tea Party. It is a blend of tea based on the original original varieties thrown overboard during the Boston Tea Party in 1773. It is a full-bodied loose tea with a with a, and uh, it's advised to add a little bit of vanilla sugar. Oh. Well, shit, I, I want to go check that out. That sounds pretty fucking cool. Um, yeah, so, Luke is on the way. Thank you. Um, so here's the thing. I, I don't know all my British monarchs off the top of my head. I know Tudorian England more than I know modern England. Um, so let's see. House of Windsor, you have Victoria, Dyson Ot one, and then it's Edward the Seventh, if I remember correctly. And then you've got one of the Georges, maybe? There was an Edward uh, VIII, who had, was the party king. Then you had George the uh, Sixth, George the Sixth. George the Sixth, right. And then, and then, okay, yeah, and then George... And then the, Elizabeth the Second. All right, so... You, you had, you had uh, hold on, let me, let me go backwards. 
get this right. You had uh, Victoria, uh, who died in 1901, Edward the Edward VIII, George the Sixth. Uh, Edward VIII abdicated. Uh, controversy around him, and then you had Victor. Uh, then you had Elizabeth II, current our current monarch. Uh, God save the Queen. Indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All the Brits like yeah, yes. You just hear like clanking of China, <laughs> like <laughs> just like unconsciously. So, all right, Edwardian era starts 1902. Let's bump it up to 1906, so we can have dreadnoughts. Uh, we got to beat the French up. So. Let's say it's four on four battleships, and let's. Uh, what is their screening for us? What do you think? Heavy cruisers or light cruisers? Or destroyers? I'd probably say destroyers. I mean, yeah, probably destroyers. As a All right, so we have to just. We, we might have like a few light cruisers, but they'd only have six inch guns, I think, at that time at most. I think, yeah. I think all our light cruisers only really had six inch, even, even into the Second World War. All right, so we'll just say this is a nice little scuffle between the battle fleets just a few years later. All right, Dreadnought time it is. Discard this hull. I, I will discard that hull. Uh, I was trying to build a new renown. Um, I love British Dreadnought lines. I love the elevated center. I, I think that's really cool. That is a very sexy hull, and I, I love the lines of it. So, Ooh, this is Britannia class. Uh, so this is Edward the Seventh. Uh, what, what, what? This is England in its most like cold, cokey, dystopianish, end of the Victorian era. You know, end of the. God, that's really interesting because Victoria was Charles Dickens to like Age of Flight. So that's kind of nuts. <laughs> um. All right. So what's What's the most British thing you can think of from the early 1900s? Tweed? Oh, um... What? The peaky fucking dreadnoughts? Peaky dreadnought. The peaky fucking blinders. Let's see. What, what would be... What would be the most British thing from the teens? Hmm. It's almost too much to choose from. Yeah, I know. What was that? Uh, there's that horrible term that comes out of the, uh, out of like, uh, there was like chalking gangs, I remember, in England back in the days where people would fall asleep on the train and someone would chalk them with a razor blade across their cheek. They're like, watch out for chalking gangs. And I saw that like written in a Victorian newspaper. I, w I was researching and, re and I was like, oh my God. Like, imagine like, you fell asleep on the train and someone stabbed you in the face. You're like, what the fuck? Wait, now wait, hold on. Um, imagine that's that's still a thing. Oh yeah, night fight city. Sorry, um, but yeah. Oh, I love the look of that hull. Oh man, look at that wireless set. Fuck yes. I I want to send. I, I want to talk like 1920s talky pictures. Just be like, <laughs> God, those are gonna be awesome. Oh look, he's got his little observation can up there. Look, it's his little water heater with like eye holes drilled in it, <laughs> so it can we crawl up there. Timothy up there. Well, yeah, his job's to look. That's the lookout. He just gets up there and he crawls around in his iron bathtub as like eight inch shells bang off of it and explode three <laughs> feet away. So I I have a my, I have a few pictures which I can send you for the end of the video if you'd like text. But it's a it's a sign here saying all persons must wash weekly. Chattel Workhouse, uh, Five Rope Street, London, England. Conduct Rule sixteen two, issued eighteen eighty three. Wow. Just, just like weird little signs. My uncle has a bunch of these weird little signs that he's collected. Uh, I've got one like the Edison Electric Light. Please don't try to set the bulb on fire. <laughs> Please don't burn our bulbs. It works. It's not magic. Please quit throwing rocks at it. Um, <laughs> so we're going to do uh, we're going to do something that's never been done before. Uh Look at all these battleship guns. You guys still want to do light guns, or do you want to switch it up and freak them out and do just giant guns? Oh, dude, can we get 16 inch? This, you know what? Let's look. Let's let's see what we got. Uh, all right, I I'm gonna make the speed like 
20 knots. I, I think 20 knots is reasonable. Uh, this is channel fleet. So, God, that range. Fuck. All right. Let me do some engine stuff. And still coal. Still coal. Absolutely. Turbines. Turbines. Yeah, it, absolutely. We're we're gonna we're gonna do yeah, crop armor and anti torpedo bell double, and then reinforced bulkheads, and then let's see, citadel. All right, so and then range finder, and then radio. Okay, so we got that many tons to play with. All right, so the biggest guns we can get are thirteen inches, which are pretty good. Um, Barrels clearly. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's like so I could put I could probably put two of those on there and a very strong secondary battery. Yeah. Let's try that. Let's try I mean, so far we're doing very British things, which is assume the enemy is wrong and build whatever you want. Uh let's see, four weight the offset. Enemy is wrong. Well, they typically was have this, been. Was this nineteen oh six, did we say? This is nineteen oh six. This is our dreadnought, essentially. I was gonna say, um the HMS Dreadnought was uh commi uh, was completed, wasn't it, in nineteen oh six? Yeah, so that's my idea is I'm I'm making uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dual eight inch guns? That's a very strong secondary. <laughs> that's 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 my god the secondary on this. Um that's that's remarkable. The ship could be all very eight dangerous. Inch guns. Yeah, all eight inch, all dual eight inch guns. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, casemates are for losers, I guess. Um, let's see what we got. Let's go with heavy shells, because yeah. Uh, Imagine after training on this, they're all deaf. Dude, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. After they're like, all right, volley, and then it's just mop, mop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give him a... <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Uh... All right, so I'm going to just make this an over-armored monster again, because that... Oh, shit. All right, half deck, one, four deck. Yeah, then... <laughs> they don't need to know that it has this much armor. I like how it just rounds up. And... Oh, I'm looking up the 1900s, and there's apparently a beer scare... Beer drinkers in Northwest England suffer from poisoning of arsenic in brewers' sugars. No, seriously, if you, <laughs> if you, no, I'm serious. If you want, okay, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna call this one the True Gath. There, I'll, I'll name a ship after a mod. There, True Gath, you have a ship. It does 20 Aww. knots and has a bunch of eight-inch guns. I should have called it the I HMS. Like it. I should have called it the HMS Tinnitus. Well, it only needs one eight-inch weapon if it's true, Gaff, am I right? Aw, oh, shit. All right. Oh, look, at him. look at him. Look at him. little snigger. <laughs> He's like, hee, hee, hee. <laughs> All right, so I can get this up to, what, 12,000? All right. Oh, yeah, no. I'll just do that, and I'll do that. And then that? Does that free up any whole space? No. Yeah, it looks like that. As long as you do nine and a half... Thousand tons. Well, yeah, looks like that's the mm -hmm. limit. However, this one goes. Yeah, it looks like nine and a half thousand tons, and this is limited to seven thousand. Oh wow, I can oh, make something like fast. long and lean and light for a light cruiser. Because all right, boys, do you want a heavy light cruiser or do you want like a speedy boy giant destroyer light cruiser? Uh, I don't think the Royal Navy ever went for the whole armored cruiser thing. Generally, they because because it, it was about getting your it was out having a, a global fleet, so it was about having something light and fast. Uh, to have the machinery to do forty nine knots in this time period with multiple expansion <laughs> steam engines, it would make this ship a forty seven thousand ton ship. <laughs> Holy fuck! That would be pistons the size of the deck. It would just be three coffee cans just going. <laughs> That's horrible. Um, well, what if I switch? Yeah, you'll, to you'll have to try um, uh, from the depths at some point. You can actually do that, and they do make that sound. The tum, 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 tum. I I may have to. I've, a lot of people have talked about it, and they've said it's a very niche game, but they think I would like it. Some of those games I don't get, like Avorion or whatever. I really wanted to enjoy that and explore it, but I just keep getting lost. I thought that was really cool, though. I thought that was a really oh. cool game. Aurora's 
quite a bit of fun. Uh, and yeah, I think some, some some people doesn't doesn't work for them. But I like watching. Don't think I was. My my ships always end up looking like a just a long gray box because I'm not very imaginative in the designs. And there's two. You, know what you need to call this what. You need to call this the teddy bear because apparently 1906 was the yes. first manufacture of a British teddy bear. <laughs> well, see, I... now this is what I love in the BPL. <laughs> this is one of the things that does warm my heart is we are sitting around talking about Victorian era stuff. And then as soon as we do that, people start looking into like, well, what else was there? And they're reading through the Victorian era papers. If you read through any of the Victorian era papers, and I don't just mean the London papers. If you read from any of the Victorian era papers, you will find hilarious shit in there. Like just day-to-day -day papers. It'll be like, drunkard spotted at night, <laughs> three crown reward for his face. And you're like, what <laughs> happened? Yeah, I'm just looking shit up while we're talking. <laughs> oh, it's Finding it's... weird shit. My um, great aunt had wallpaper that was just newspapers from that era. Oh man, I it bet. Was hilarious. Oh yeah, D that era is fucking great. Oh my god, look at this front battery. It's <laughs> it's three four it's three four inch guns instead of one three barreled one. It's <laughs> they can compete. They can com <laughs> they can compete. Um, yeah, we'll just use picric acid because fuck it. Uh, range finders, what? Sure. Um, armor? No, this is all speed. That's all this thing is is speed. This thing can do. Can it do thirty five knots? No. Shit. Ramming speed. It can do ramming speed. It is ramming speed. Um, it's and the spear of the navy. <laughs> the spear of the navy. Well, it's a trident, I should say, because with that front three on the deck. That's oh. <laughs> You know, we'll name the destroyer the teddy bear, right? Because those are supposed to be cute, <laughs> right? And we'll make it very much not a teddy bear. British. I want to increase the tonnage, but it's at six six nine. That seems wrong. Don't don't you touch it. All right, so now we then have to go do the destroyer. Um, and what is my maximum tonnage? One thousand tons. All right, fine. Uh, its range is short. This is the channel fleet. Uh, coal, of course. What do you think I am? A ponce? Coal! Coal! Gotta keep, gotta keep the fucking Barnsley men in work. Well, that's the thing is... Had, yeah, go ahead. We had, um... Our, our train were steam engines till 1950 because power to weight, they were better than the diesels. Well, it's not only that. You guys have a massive coal industry and it's like why not yeah. use what you got like why would you not use what you have as an industry what God gave you. yeah exactly it was just high maintenance that was the main problem yeah they they typically are all right let's do oh my god little baby dick guns on this destroyer oh my god little, little two inch <laughs> guns is like <laughs> when the reason is is because uh I'm putting the big torps on it, and I'm gonna get its speed up to like 32. No, I can go faster. Okay, 40. Yes, we can do 40 knots. 42. This is scary. 44. All right, so 43.5. Yep. So we're we're already faster than what the Zumwalts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this. I think this would be like a fisheries patrol destroyer. You know what I mean? Like, just go out and be like, hey, fuck off. Like, it's really fast. Or freedom of navigation destroyer. So, teddy bear. So, what other horrible Victorian facts are we finding? Like, it, you should go read through the Victorian era ads in the paper. They are great. Be like, I'm loving, um, uh, uh, during this year, it's undated. Anti-vivisectionist brown dog statues erected in Battersea, provoking riots. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. For uh, four years, apparently, uh, there was a massive battle between local medical students, the police, and uh, the public. Um, d uh, trying, it basically was a, a fight for animal rights. Oh, the brown dog? Yeah, the brand <laughs> All right, so the battleships, the Chugath, and the London are... St good God, look at the smoke. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, the battleship formation is proceeding at half speed. Uh, they are switching to uh, AP at this range. And we are just going to shell them with AP at half speed. The uh, cruiser line and the destroyer line have been ordered to lay smoke in their engines and just go full fucking at them. So I'm, I'm going to fight the first stages of this fight with an insane destroyer squadron of British like turbo destroyers. If they can actually form up because they're, well, they're probably signaling at each other being like, what? <laughs> like, what are you on about? <laughs> well, the Admiral has a signal to the fleet and then the fleet has a signal receipt and then everything's just going everywhere. And it's probably the wireless is jammed with people yelling orders back to the fleet Admiralty headquarters. And so everything's going to be like flash or flag. And it's just like <laughs> ships driving through smoke and maneuvering and trying to signal each other like, no, wait, what side are you on? No, no, you drive over here and then we form up and hope the enemy doesn't watch you and know what you're doing. It's fucking horrible. Okay, there's their battle. Oh, no, look at that. They went with a very heavy battery. My God. That means the rest of that thing has to be fucking paper. It has to be. It has to be fucking paper with a battery that heavy. Have you sent me? <laughs> Ask your bootmaker for cock. Ask your bootmaker for cock? <laughs> CJ just sent me a fucking block. What is this? Ask your bootmaker for cock. Oh, it's uh, one of those old enamel signs. Oh, God. It's just yeah. enough rust. I. <laughs> I love that, I remember one of them was, I, I remember reading it was like, Dr. Pemberton's famous cocaine pills for manly vigor. <laughs> and it was, I was just sitting there going like, man, could you imagine if you were just like, oh man, I'm dragging my feet, I, I can't get anything done. Uh, and then rather, rather than just have a blah day, you go down to the pharmacy and there's just this magical wall of anything you want. My God, it's amazing we survived that era at all as a species. Oh, no. The Woolston, what kind of name is that for destroyer? It got set on fire. Uh, and it, 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 is, it, is not, it does not have much armor. The Woolston may be in trouble. It took a hit. Um, the rest of the destroyers are just moving. Oh, yeah, the Woolston's sinking badly. <laughs> oh, God. I'm in danger. Well, as it turns out, driving full speed, oh, you have a hull, and the hull uh, invites the water in at full speed, and that has some problems. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have him stop uh, and try to lay smoke and become buoyant. Yeah. See now that I'm slowing down, his floats. Well, he's fighting it. Jesus, that's bad. <laughs> <coughs> He's good. Hands to pumps. Yeah. <laughs> I say, the water is at our ankles. Normally, it's not. Grab the wedges. <laughs> Grab the wet like a fucking... <laughs> like a sail ship. <laughs> Grab the wedges, no. bang them between the frames to bend the wood back. No, have you have you not seen how the Royal Navy fights um, leaks? I, I have. Even the modern day. Yeah, I, I know Fair they enough. do have wedges in modern day, but I, I'm just saying, in, in my mind, it evoked damage control from the Age of Sail, <laughs> where you have all the carpenter shop grabbing all their blocks and hammers and being like, bend the frame back, or like getting out a jack to like bend something back into shape. <laughs> that would be unnerving to see, like you, you nail this ship, and as it starts to slowly come about, like a mile out to come back at you you hear carpenters at work like you hear like nails and sawing you're like fuck <laughs> it's like the borg you know you just like knock a hole in it and it slowly starts to come back okay so See planks go up exactly just like i say all right so uh we've got one We've got one destroyer that is slowly coming back. God, he's pumping out quick. Uh, so three cheers to the Royal Navy. Holy shit. Like, the guy's coming back into formation. He's like, yep. All right, we have one destroyer, the Truculent, that is closing within very close of this uh, cruiser here. So I'm going to put everything on hyper-aggressive and just shoot HE at him. 
and uh, do my best. That's an awesome word. It is. <laughs> it is. No idea what it means. Not, but there are some words like that that I don't know what they mean, but I, I know they sound fancy. Like, I'm, without looking it up, you could say, if someone told you, like, ah, yes, this ham is most truculent, you would be like, yes. Yes. Very truculent, this ham. Okay, the truculent at full speed is almost as fast as the torpedoes. Like, I've see, just looked it up. <laughs> all right, what is truculent? Disposed or eager to fight or engage in hostile opposition. Belligerent. It's very truculent. Belligerent. belligerent. <laughs> Dude, uh, the truculent. Oh, semicolon. The truculent is like outracing its torpedoes. It's going down at the bow. It's taking hits. But I am, I am very close to the enemy. This is good. All right, so the Truculent is coming in. The rest of them are coming in. The cruisers are coming. The Trident, with all of its front guns. That was probably an Admiralty guy going like, it should have more front guns. The ship I was on as a lad had front guns. I want my front guns, please. I think the Truculent is unable to uh, avoid the death that is going to come from these torpedoes. Uh, that's bad. <sighs> oh, 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 boom. Yeah, that's a my bad gosh. hit. Truculent, you were very truculent. You lived up to your name. What if there was a ham called Ham Truculent? It was just very hot, you know? You're like, ah, yes, the, the belligerent ham. Fuck. <laughs> Thinking. Yeah, he, he got torpedoes off, but they're, they're not going to hit. Uh, all right, so we are down one ship. We have another one crippled. However, the uh, battleship line is plowing forward. I'm telling the battleships to, of course, uh, focus on the battleships. The other battleship is the France and the Languedoc. And uh, they have one cruiser that's up here that is way too close. So let's, yeah, let's concentrate all fire on this, uh, on the Molcom. So, yeah, he needs to burn. Yeah, well, that's oh, good. Thank nice. you. Thank you, Royal Navy. You know what you should do? Hmm. You should speak to Greg and get some voiceovers for this. Oh, God. He'd, he'd, he'd be like, why are we always... You know what? Next time around, I'll let him guide me on making a French Navy. How's that? There you go. And then I'll let that the Germans uh, let me guide on making a very... Ge oh, my God. It'll be the h plan battleships all over again. What, what is the biggest one we can make, Mr. Tex? No, it would be more efficient to have one giant... Ca Let's make the ship a cannon. You will shoot the moon and it will fall on the enemy. Oh, man. Montcalm. And then we've got the rest of these fuckers. You got France. You got them. Let's do this. All right, let's speed it up while this ship... Oh, yeah, the trident's coming up on them. They do appear to be running away. They are. They're fighting to disengage because they're being very belligerent. We sent Truculent at them. They read its hull plate and they were like, zoot lore, and they ran away. The Triton's coming up on them, though. Though it is on fire a little bit. Doesn't seem to bother it much. Oh, uh, they're shooting torpedoes at the Trident. That's not good. Hard over. Hard over! Turning inside? Yes! Alright, I dodged him. Ah, yes. Stupidity. Maneuvering. Oh man, look at that. We're just driving up on him and gunning him down. So this worked well. Um, the Trident class is not a bad light cruiser. I mean, it's, 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 it's not the most armored thing in the world. And, I mean, it just blew up from hitting a torpedo at point-blank range, but it's very aggressive. So, I mean, that's great. Oh, man, it's taking, like, eight torpedoes. Yeah, okay. We, we, are, we are on the downside so far for being so aggressive. We have to hope our battleships can uh, make a difference. Their, their ships are sinking as well, though. I don't see their destroyer line, which kind of bothers me.
So their destroyer line is still out there. I, I just think we can't spot it because of the smoke. <laughs> They're definitely spreading out. Yeah. Oh, there's some over there. There they are. Yeah, the destroyer screen is running behind them. That's very odd. I, I don't know what that's about. That's that's a strange one. All right, so we're going to bring up the uh, light cruiser Adventure. Another great name for a fucking destroyer. Like a cruiser? That's great. So if you lads could uh, name a ship class... A, or a, a ship for the Royal Navy. What would it be? Oh, wait. Um, one second. Oh, you're just going to start looking up all the historical crazy ones? Because I'm telling you, the Royal Navy smoked a lot of crack once upon a time. <laughs> no. There was a uh, engineer from my hometown. I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> Well, yeah, but it's it's one of those things where the Royal Navy will be like, ah, yes, this scabrous, and you're like, what? <laughs> it's like someone is just like, we're going to name something insane, and they just do it. And some of them are really cool names, like Warspite. I can't believe you guys kept that apart. But its whole plate is in a pub somewhere, which means it's not dead. It yet lives. It, it yet lives. Well, I, I want to know where that pub is. I, I would go have a whiskey in that pub just to, just to toast the worst bite whole plate. So you uh, you planning on coming to the UK at some point? At some point, yeah, I need to come back. And it, at that point, I have to uh, I, I do have to go see the worst bite plate. And if if ever that became available to like preserve, I'd absolutely do a fundraiser to make sure that went to a museum. That'd be too fucking cool. It's it's served many generations. Now it watches over drunks. It's amazing. All right, so so we have uh, one pub in the UK has an L-shaped bar made from the wood from HMS Warspite, which is and the, and the pub is called the Cutty Sark. Oh yeah, looks like a nice place actually. What city is it? M Marizan? Oh, Marizan! Um, in Cornwall. Uh, it's yeah, uh, a really nice little town. Max, I have bad news. Yeah? The nameplate that was held by the pub, the Wink, in Cornwall has been sold at auction. God damn it. Oh, well, at least we've got the one... Oh, my apologies. Okay. At least we've got the one that has the, uh, the uh, a bar made from the wood. Which I highly recommend you visit, uh, Dex. It's um, uh, it's got a really beautiful. Uh, th there's an island just off the shore with a causeway, which you can cross on uh, when the tide is low, um, and visit the castle on the island. It's fucking you awesome. Can actually drive across it. It's a paved causeway. Cool. By the way, our destroyer squadron is fucking insane. They're doing like 43 knots into these enemy formations at point blank range, and the enemy doesn't know what to do. Like, they're just like, what? We just needed to get amongst them. Yeah, the. <laughs> I mean, look at this. <laughs> this is. Like, this is insane. I would be terrifying. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, speaking of terrifying, the light cruiser is within one click of these battleships. And shooting torpedoes at very, very short range. God damn. Yeah, he's gonna miss that one, but still, that's awesome. That's worthy of song. The adventure going toe-to-toe -to -toe with battleships, the fucking destroyer clash out here. <sighs> Everyone just Ooh. unloading in all directions. Oh no, they may collide. Oh no. Yes. 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 <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Sliced. Yeah, that's that's insane. Like you got ships out there just smashing into each other in full fucking speed. Just like ah. Nobody has any idea what's going on. This is great. Uh, you've got this. I think, the, 
I think the commander of that squadron really he wanted to be in the household cavalry, but he they wouldn't let him. So he's like, okay, we're going to do a charge on the. Uh, our light cruiser is getting like <laughs> smashed between two battleships. That is awful. Perhaps, oh no. Perhaps today is a good day to die. Yeah, it died a horrible death. It it died a horrible death. However, it did some damage. Uh, looked like it torpedoed one of their uh, battleships quite badly, and will slow it down. Our battleships, the London, has some hits. I think those are torpedo hits. The Trugath is untouched. Let us switch to HE. All right, I I think that our oh the teddy bear is uh oh oh no oh no they're beating the shit out of it they're done with marmalade I guess good god all right so yeah our destroyer fleet has driven into their destroyer fleet and caused catastrophic damage but at its own catastrophic damage we've got the uh, true gaff. Which we're, I'm telling everything on aggressive because we're now facing off against the entire French fleet. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Nelson's problem. <laughs> Shit. All right. So I'm just going to hit everything that can come close to me and kill it. That's, that's my new plan. However, I am now within their torpedo range. So, oof. All right. Let's do this. And yeah, I'm just going to be aggressive as shit. They, if they shall fuck around, they shall find out. Yes. I think that's Bomber Harris, right? Please, please hit and blow this little thing up. Looks like one of those destroyers that we rammed uh, is, is now sinking. They're still torpedoing each other out there like nuts as they drive by at like a million miles an hour. All right, I'm going to tell the destroyers to engage AI to command them uh, so I can concentrate on the battleships because we're going to just start shelling this guy and setting him on fire. Yeah, flames. Have some of that. All we got to do is drive their battleships off and then we can kind of win. However, this destroyer is coming alarmingly close and I'm... <laughs> oh, dear. Hmm. Uh, I wonder what he's up to. Um, he, uh, go away. Go away. Please leave. <laughs> no. The main That's battery is trying to, the main battery is trying to get a fix on him. Oh, that works. Wow. <laughs> oh, here comes a torp. No. Ow. That's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Okay, it's it's going down. We we hit it pretty bad with the battery. It's I think it's more protected by the ocean than my armor at this at this point. Um Yeah, it's not gonna last much longer. No. They're uh, yeah, they're pumping water out. It looks like the true gath might actually stabilize its float quite easily. Oh man. He is having a bad time. <laughs> My God, he's he's fighting spinning it. In circle. Yeah, he's just spinning. He's he's fighting the flood, but uh, he ain't got much. Ooh, ooh, yeah. That's that's the end of that. Ooh. All right, so the the destroyer fleet is out there just running ape, chasing each other around, and you've got. We're going to concentrate fire on the battleship fleet here and just see if we can't drive it off. Oh, wow. One of our battleships almost torped this fucking battleship. Shit. That was a great shot. That was an excellent attempt. It might still hit this cruiser, though, on accident. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, so I aimed to sh Oh, no, it, it detonated. Uh, Fuck. I was going to say, that would have been hilarious if it oh. just, you know, just slowly hit the wrong guy. And you're like, yes, that's what I meant. That was my shot. Well done, lads.
All right, so I one of their French. Uh, this is the one that got nailed by my cruiser, and I mean absolutely shrecked. Oh man, this is some this is some good fleet action. Oh no. Oh uh, well, the eh, some of these destroyers are not having good times. Oh whoa, a long shot torpedo and a hit. Nice. The true gaff nailed him with a torpedo. Very well done. I mean that's the ship that lined up by the time the torpedo intersected, so I'm assuming it was him who shot it from there, because that lines up in the geometry of it, but mm -hmm. Yeah. Shit. I mean, this is good shooting, but it looks like we're just driving them off. It's nice. Get out of my get out of my sea. Go away. Looks like we're yeah, actually Yeah, looks like we're actually winning. We're driving them from the field. They they don't want to stay. All right. I'm going to put the main battery on normal, the secondary battery on aggressive. Cuz the main battery, you can run out of shells. That is a problem. And he has 11 inch guns. We got 13 inches, so we we need to we need to let the heavier uh, rounds do their work. All right. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try to hit him. Oh boy. Now we got a proper artillery duel. Shells coming in. Shells coming in. Shells coming in. I mean, so far so good, I guess. Bastards. It's an artillery duel, all right. I mean, it seems like they don't want to commit, which is fine. Their destroyers are on the wrong side of the screen, laying smoke to save themselves, not the battleships. So that's interesting. So far, they can't do much other than ding the funnel on the True Gath, and they got a lucky torpedo hit, which on the London, which they've corrected for the most part. It looks like everything's been perfectly stabilized. So yeah, I mean they're they're gonna have to they're gonna have to suck it because we got good battleships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just rounds flying in. They can't seem to make shit land. Uh huh. They're losing destroyers as well. Oh, one of our fast boys chased him down. That's what happened. They just chased him down and shot him to pieces. It's hard to run from like forty something knots. That's amazing. I was like, why did it stop down from five times to three times? And it's like, oh, yeah, because uh, <laughs> one of our guys is probably at point blank range shooting someone. Mm -hmm. Which they all were over there, which explains their the teddy bear is still alive. How? Well, I mean, that's the whole <laughs> that's the whole engine space full of water and the captain is dead. But it seems like they've stabilized it and it's just. Yep. He's still got the pumps running, so I mean I'll take it. I mean it's it's really a wash, but it's right sure. Um Ah yes, now we're in nasty range. We're starting to get good hits on him. Oh man, True Gaths, you're taking some hits. It's bad. Oh, no. It is bad. Oh boy. I don't think we've done quite as well this time. Well, maybe it's because the Victorian era, you just had a lot more coal smoke, and maybe that just obscured the haze of war enough to make things difficult for enemy gunners. Like they didn't know if they were shooting at a cloud. All right, so Languedoc. There we go. Burning. I mean, we are sinking it slowly. It's very attrition. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we just have to basically give everyone there a concussion so they stop fixing things. And then 
let nature take its course. Um, so far though, our gunnery is winning the day. Mm -hmm. And the, there's three destroyers left, which is about what I think they expected in any case. Because uh, our destroyers are out there all fucked up, but they're chasing down their destroyers, which are also fucked up. This is a death by a thousand ding. Yes, it is. This is absolutely ding. death by a thousand dings. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn our ships because it looks like he is almost coming to a stop in the water. He's taking on a lot of water and he's not. Yeah, getting, he's. Yeah. He's very much fighting that. Yeah, he's 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 really not moving very well. You could grate cheese on this hull. Yeah, it's uh. Hey. Can you get uh, can you get to get round for the uh, beam torpedo tube? I can try, but I'm gonna have to come pretty close because uh, the range at this point is like uh, looks like our range is six point one clicks, and that's oh yeah. See how his engines just smoke straight up? He stopped almost. That of the wind shifted. Actually, wind's going this way, so yeah, he's he's almost engines out. Trugath is stable. I mean, we're coming in. We'll just run this one down and everything in front of it. Oh, he's really in trouble now. His structure's starting to fail. Ricochet. Ow. Oh, man. What a savage gun duel. Yeah, their shot their shots are bouncing off ours quite well. It's it's uh we angled in, so Can you imagine the incredible noise of a thirteen inch shell just like bouncing, bouncing off, off the yeah. steel? Ugh. Yeah, I mean that's that's gotta be unnerving, especially because you know it'd make a bong and then you'd see it like pop the hull. And and or make a dent and you'd just be like, yeah, I could have died right there. I mean, that would have been like a shit your pants moment every few seconds. I was going to say, in relatively confined spaces, there'd be a bit of an air pressure change, right? Absolutely. I mean, it'd be like being inside of a drum that was being beaten. It w it would be it would be horrific. It's okay, they're all deaf anyway. Oh yeah, that's true. I mean, you can't hear of those engines, so they're just like, Oh, the guns are going? I say. Did I hit us, or were you we firing again? <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, incoming or outgoing, Gerald? Ger uh, incoming? Oh dear. Alright, so we've got, we've got these guys going. Oh no, another torp? Oh, he overcorrected. He 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 thought it was going faster than it was. Well, probably by the time he launched, he was still moving a bit. This guy's barely moving now. This guy's battery is actually running out of ammo. His side batteries. Not the 4 one, but the... I th oh, yeah, there he goes. He flooded out. All right, so now we have to destroy this light cruiser. We have to begin to turn the tide of this battle of the channel fleet, and I think HE is the way to go. Yeah, they're they're running out of main battery ammo. I'm not because I brought a lot. These guys are dumb. Bring more ammo, guys. You might need it. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to escape. They're just shooting into a smoke cloud now. They're like, oh, well, okay, they hit something. The main tower's been destroyed. Oh, um, there we go. Yeah, so they're like, you don't know what it is. Kill it. <laughs> just fill, fill the uh, sea with a rainbow of lead. Aim for the fire, lads. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's uh, like the end of Star Trek 6.
So here we go. Oh. Oh, that's fine. We got a bit of fire. We got a bit of fire going. Look at that shit. Oh, look at that fire burning. It's beautiful. So we, we may not be able to identify what we're shooting at, but we know we're hitting it. So good job, boys. It's a cruiser. Or might not be soon. Also, their captain's dead, so they, they probably don't know which way to run. That fire also looks like it's spreading. It's definitely spreading. Yeah. It's it's definitely getting very upset on this Monopoly looking ship. Uh, <laughs> it does look like it's off Monopoly board. Yeah, and, a, and a, yeah. I'll take pot, please. No, you won't. You'll go to the bottom of the ocean. You fucking tumble home, whole piece of shit. All right, get down there. Get in your place. Is that an armored cruiser? It does look like an armored It does look cruiser. like a built-up armored cruiser, uh, especially of the era. Mm -hmm. You know, like Olympia. Even it's a CL, yeah. Yeah, oh, there he goes. Well, I think this game classifies that instead of trying to say, oh, what's technically a panzer ship or a pocket battleship or blah, you can basically, instead of making that distinction, um, it'll just say, like, small battleship, and that's under the battleship line. Just, just to kind of save on distinction um or at least getting up in arms over it so i think the game just kind of classifies it as a light cruiser but under light cruisers are the armored cruisers i think they're under some of the heavy cruisers as well you asked for ship names yes i would like to name one the curmudgeon the curmudgeon yeah the curmudgeon nice word. Just an that would be like a fucking like uh the Tim's monitor or something, or like a steam ram. Its <laughs> job is just to push people out of port. Like, no, you spent too much time here. I've got uh, a couple of names, uh the excoriate and the exterminate. Jesus. I have one. Uh the Nebnet Thrupwell. What? It's a small town near my hometown. Wow. The Nebnet Thrupwell. I want just disintegrated. Yeah, that, that one fell apart. Now we're shooting at this destroyer. Their battleship line has left. Like, their battleship line, their lead battleship is fine. Their other battleship is... I think it's gone. Did it sink yeah, without us seeing sing it? Where is it? Did we lose it? The other, the enemy, the, there's only one left. You sank the other. I think it's an artificial reef now. Oh. Yeah, shit. I was going to say, like, did I? Because I've been bouncing back and forth. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're we're beating the shit out of their fleet and the last battleship is leaving. I mean, I think this is a victory. But we have to sink this destroyer so only the one untouched battleship comes back and they all mock him. That's what we want. We want the untouched battleship to come back to port so they wonder if they even fought. And that the ships didn't just sink themselves. That's what I want. I want that man to carry the shame as he goes home empty-handed. I would be horrendous shame. It's like... No, I was at the battle. Back. There's no damage. Yeah. And you haven't used any of your ammo. <laughs> and he's just like, no, I was there. I promise. Well, he's used ammo. It's just not hit anything, and nothing's hit him. So, yeah, that's fucked up. We'll just say that, yes, he ran at the first sign of battle, and so they remove one of their competent admirals. That's, that's how we do it. We saw them dumping ammo overboard to make it look like they were fired back. Hey, you have a most cowardly commander. And then they, like, remove their actually intelligent commander who disengages, and, oh my god, that would be horrific. But, I mean, that's war, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they have one destroyer left, and he's just like, I'm smoking. Please don't blow me up. I'm a fisheries protection vessel. I'm just minding my own business. This is about cod, isn't it? And then just fireball. Ah, yes, the Royal Navy. Time to sneer at our enemies. You're getting very close to current events. <laughs> it's always been a, an issue. There's always a fishing disagreement with France yeah. or something. That's that's what you guys do. We yeah, get it. Forever. 
It's forever. <laughs> it's 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 just a fishing disagreement. I get it. The forever war of the UK. Yeah, like some people have wars over you know territory. You guys have wars over like cod. So whatever. I mean, everybody's got their thing. Okay, put some dings in the France. Just let them know what they're still in range. We do consume an ungodly amount of cod. Why is that? Is it just there, or is it an acquired taste, or is it... Why do you guys still eat like the Germans are flying overhead? That's my question. Um, deep-fried cod tastes fucking good. Yep. Yeah. Deep-fried deep cod, deep-fried sausages. Uh, it's... Well. Deep-fried pizza, uh, iron brew. Oh, don't remind me. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's made I, from I garters. It is made from garters. All right, but deep deep fried Mars bar, deep fried Snickers. Just you can't get the, the good iron brew anymore, though, can you? Oh, they changed the recipe, didn't they? Mm. Yeah, no, less sugar. You also have mm. breakfast, which is uh, yes. hot. It, it's like port and caffeine. It's that the shit is horrifying. I need to send you like ten crates of it. Uh, no, thank you. I I enjoy uh, my sense of sight. Nah. I it's, it's fine. It's fine, you says. Just don't do the entire crate. You might live. That's fair. I mean... Yeah, it's, moderation, Matt. Wean yourself as, onto it. It's not as bad as chartreuse. Chartreuse is the yeah. hobo bile. That shit is awful. <laughs> that shit is I the worst love thing. It. Ugh. <laughs> Why do you love chartreuse? It's a decadent hobo. It's... Uh, I like the taste, actually. Jesus I fuck. I really like the taste. That is the... I know. The, uh, and just, it's a very uh, quiet taste. Yeah, so is Lefroy. It's definitely a I quiet mean, taste. I, I, I like Lefroy plenty, and most people are like, this is like drinking wildflowers that have been burned in... Me, yeah, they're, it's Yeah, horrible. me and my father uh, both love Lefroy. Lefroy's great, actually. It's not for everyone. It's it's not a dessert scotch, that's for certain. Um, it's, it's more like a, with a big roast or a fine meal scotch sort of thing. Okay, mm -hmm. the Hova, uh, they, yeah, the destroyer screen, what remaining destroyers they have tried to make a torp run, and now we're just using our secondaries to light them on fire and go away. There we go. Oh, wow. Easy. Their battleship uh... is turning back. He, he resents being attacked. We radioed ahead. Ah. Uh, the broadsheets are already being printed. <laughs> You're like, ah, we will have our lies in the press by noon. <laughs> Regardless of what the Navy actually does today. Smashing victory in the channel. What would be kind of funny, like really funny, I think, is if you had a... I think it would be absolutely fucking bonkers if you sank half their navy and you chased the other half down and... Oh, well, that guy's done. If you sank half their wow. navy and you, uh, you chased the other half down, and as you did so, um, you radioed back, like, oh, yes, they're all running and they're scuttling their own ships. So when their ships don't come back, they think their navy just gave up. You know, I think that'd be a good idea for a game. Like a fucking newspaper article. Like, play it like Papers, Please? Well, the guy who wrote uh, Papers, Please, the predecessor to it is a browser game called the Kalechia Times, which is set in the, uh, I think it's the Kalechia Times, I think. It's, um, no, it's something else. It's got to be something else. But it was his first game, and it's set in that universe as Papers, Please, and you run a newspaper, and you have to print so many pro-government ads or, the, or things while also writing true events and balancing it out. So you can run your paper oh, under shit. government censorship. Republia times. Republia Repub times. Let's yeah, look. and so it's definitely worth playing. It's really it was cool. Lism there. I didn't know about this. Dare. It's a really cool game. He makes games that kind of make you think, and I li I like Papers Please is great. I would love to see a game where you played in a RPG. Uh, much like Disco Elysium, but in a game like Papers, Please, or I'd love a tabletop RPG in the universe of Papers, Please, or something like that. I, I think that would be kind of interesting. Ah, yes, the France has finally spotted the Trugath. Yeah, Trugath and the London are now bracketing it. 
as it's trying to leave after uh, our fleet still has three ships left. We took some bad initial runs because the bonkers crazy torpedo antics, but I mean, that's expected. Uh, I'm noticing he's not really shooting back at all. Um, um, he may be out of ammo. And we're about to run out leave? of ammo. Sorry, Tex. Go ahead. Did you intentionally leave him to last, or is this just good fortune? Good fortune. Um, so we've got this ship would just, it's, it's not doing well. So he's just going to hang over here and do his own thing very poorly. Uh, my mean batteries are running out of ammo, uh, trying to shell this dude who's now just trying to leave. Like he wants nothing to do with us and he's not even returning fire. He's, uh, he's, he's very much fucking around. He doesn't, he doesn't quite understand that. I, I'm displeased with him and wish to pursue him from my borders. But it looks like the, the batteries are having uh, no, no luck on this. So I think we can claim victory as he's leaving and one ship goes back with just a few dings in it and they wonder what happened. Unless this yeah, last one hits and blows win. it up. No, they don't. Fuck. That would have been awesome. Like, just bonk, explosion. Ah. Uh, Come on, lads. Give us a good hit. Come on. Oh, that's very close. That's very, very close. Ah, uh, damn. We just don't have the uh, luck to actually get the uh, plunging fire to penetrate at this range. That's always a problem, I guess, lads. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, what a battle. 